Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us. So our guest today is Dr. Harold Mankiewicz, Associate Professor and Director of Clinical Research at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. He's going to talk to us today about a potential breakthrough in non-opioid post-surgery pain. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Thank you very much. Give our listeners just a brief background about yourself. I did say that you're Associate Professor there at the University of Texas. Well, I'm trained in anesthesia, so I'm a board-certified anesthesiologist. But my special interest is the study of acute pain and acute pain medications, which I've been studying since my residency, which is 28 years ago. I'm always looking for new modalities and new ways which we can help uh, alleviate patients' pain after surgery particularly. Let's talk about this uh, breakthrough that's currently under review. Certainly. So uh, the exciting data which we have is from a new study which showed that when combining HTX11 with over-the-counter pain medications such as acetaminophen and ibuprofen, 90% of patients did not require any opioids to manage their post-operative pain through 72 hours after surgery or even need a discharge prescription for opioids and above that 81% of the patients in this study remained completely opioid-free through eight days after surgery. Now, you mentioned specifically a a 72-hour period there. Is that the time when -hmm. when pain and and the potential for severe uh, reactions, is that when it's most critical for folks to use opioids for pain management? You're quite right in pointing that out. So the first 72 hours after surgery is the time when pain is most common and most severe. Mm -hmm. And this is because the pain signals from the incision site are intensified by the inflammation at the site of surgery. So this process starts pretty early and reaches its peak in about 24 hours Mm -hmm. and remains elevated for up to 72 hours or so after surgery. Mm -hmm. So this period of time following surgery is the most crucial for patient recovery for pain management. Would this, uh, would this be considered a, a, a drug or, or a supplement? Explain how it works. Uh, certainly. So HTX is actually an investigational dual-acting local anesthetic, which we give without a needle into the actual surgical site, and the aim is to um, address the post-surgical pain. So how it's different from currently acting local anesthetics in the market is that it's formulated with two well-known and actually tested medications that work together. One is bupivacaine, which is a local anesthetic. The other is meloxicam, which is an anti-inflammatory drug. And together, they work to reduce pain for 72 hours after surgery. And in the 11 was the first local anesthetic to show superiority versus the standard of care drug which we now use in the phase three clinical studies. Does the study address all types of uh, surgery, um, as including dental, um, uh, spinal, any type of surgical procedure, or are there specific procedures that lend themselves better to this uh, treatment than others? Well, in the clinical development program, HTX-11 was actually studied across a wide range of surgeries, and that included hernia surgery, uh, bunionectomy, abdominoplasty, total knee arthroplasty, uh, breast augmentation, and other models. So it has been used in a number of different um, clinical scenarios, and um, obviously, when, once it's, if, if it's approved, to be more use of the uh, indica- uh, indicated, but the opioid-free study was conducted in hernia care alone. And um, effective in both uh, males and females, I'm going to assume? There's no difference in efficacy between males or females. What, what would you say are the next steps as far as the process of approval for HTX-11? Well, the drug is under review by the FDA, and their decision date is April 30th of this year. So 
I can't really speak much beyond that. Okay, so April 30th is, is when we'll find out whether or not the FDA is going to approve it. In the meantime, as far as patients dealing with uh, with opioids, is there anything on the horizon for uh, some of these people that are uh, having surgery as we speak? Something. Well, all, all of us in the healthcare industry looking at trying to combat this opioid crisis are very involved with all different ways we can to decrease this problem because I think one thing we don't often think about is that the post surgery set is really an under-recognized gateway to opioid abuse. When you consider that there's probably more than 50 million surgical procedures every year in the U.S. with 90% of those, which is about 45 million people, who get opioids after surgery for pain management and approximately one out of 15 of those patients may go on to long-term opioid abuse. You understand why we're all working so hard to try and get an opioid-free post-operative course. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, the FDA recently had an advisory committee and they reported that at discharge, patients receive an average of 30 opioid pills at over hernia surgery, while only nine of these pills are used. And the recent study of the HCA11 would suggest that a drug that uh, reduces pain substantially reduces the need for post-op opioids. Um, a surgeon who actually could eliminate prescriptions for almost all their patients, and in turn, they could actually significantly reduce excess opioids going out into communities. So if you do the math for hernia repair alone, this could mean a reduction of almost 24 million opioid pills every year not being re- re- um, released into the community. Wow. So I think there's so much talk about treatment for opioid addiction, and this is critical, but we not really need to start giving equal attention to preventing new patients from addicted. And the fewer opioids that we need and prescribe, that would mean the fewer opioids that would be taken. And the billions of dollars that are spent on um, pain management due to the surgeries that, that we are discussing, that would be greatly uh, reduced as well. I mean, isn't the cost of surgery, doesn't the cost take into consideration the management of the surgery? Isn't that included uh, in calculating the cost? And once that uh, pain management uh, has been reduced, it should take the cost of the surgery itself down, wouldn't you say? Well, I think the, the, the uh, impact on um, cost is actually the uh, return to, to back to being back to work again, back to functionality, without patients having to suffer from chronic pain, from poorly controlled pain, or the potential for opioid addiction, and all the costs that, that have that associated with. Well, where can our listeners go and get some more information about 8HTX11? Um, Probably uh, the website, probably of the developed this, this product, is, um, it's called Heron Therapeutics, and the website, I think, is heron, H-E-R-O-N-T-X dot com. And you're a, you're a clinical investigator for that company as well? Correct. I've done a number of different clinical trials with the development program for this drug. www.herontx.com, H-E-R-O-N-T-X Dot com. Dr. Harold Minkovitz, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button and support us if you can.